Alpine, heading 185, reduce speed 182 knots. 185 on the heading 180 on the speed go fair 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 mean. Hi there guys, Matt here, hope you're all well and welcome back to yet another P3D video. It's been a long time since I've actually managed to make a video because I have, if you've been watching me on Twitch, been struggling with constant crashes with the new uh, version 3.1. Uh, it came out of nowhere, absolutely out of nowhere, and I've been trying for the last couple of weeks pretty much every single day to try and fix it to the point where I ended up even reinstalling Windows and uh, it still didn't work so what I've ended up doing is rolling back to version 3.0 and hopefully when 3.2 comes out which shouldn't be too long the crashes that I'm experiencing will have been eradicated anyway that means that all the footage that I had recorded in 3.1 I had about five or six videos ready to edit and render I completely forgot to back up so when I reformatted it got rid of it all so there were some Concord videos, there were some VFR videos, there were some Dash 8 flying as well. Um, it's all gone. Uh, so instead of going back and re-recording that, um, which I will do eventually, uh, I figured I wanted to de-stress. And I, I guess this is kind of a test of my system to make sure it's all good. Um, this is going to be a long-haul flight in the 777, as you can see in front of us. We're in Singapore Airlines. This is a 300ER. And we're going to take this from here up to Munich in part one and then in part two over to Manchester. This is Singapore 328 and they do this service uh, in kind of a two-part. They fly it to Munich, then on to Manchester, spin it around, fly it back to Munich and then back to Singapore. Uh, I'm not going to do all four legs, um, just two. So this is going to be part one as I said and then the next video will be part two. Uh, it's currently uh, approaching 10.30 in the evening in Singapore. Uh, this thing departs, I think, at 12:30 or 11:30, and then it gets into Sing. Sorry, it gets into Munich even at um, about five, between five and six a.m. So we should have some really awesome sunrise views on the descent into Munich. It's always nice to do uh, flights in real time like this, especially when they're long, because you kind of get to see an entire cycle of uh, of day versus night, which is uh, is always cool. One thing I did notice though, which I've never seen before, and I probably should have paid more attention to it, if you look at the lighting in, I kind of want to say premium economy, everything up the front end, so business first, whatever, it's very, um, very mood lit. And I knew that they'd modeled this, but I'd just never really seen it, and it's only just stood out to me then when I started recording. If you look at the back, there's nothing there, but then as you look towards the front, it's, um, it's really nice. It looks like my room almost. So I fitted LEDs around my, uh, my computer, which is uh, pretty cool. It's nice. It's, it's good on the eye and uh, definitely has the desired effect. Anyway, so enough excuses about why there's been no videos. Um, I will re-record the Concord stuff and I will re-record everything that I've missed unless it's not worth doing again. Uh, I'm a little bit gutted, actually, because I had the Dash 8 video um, where I forgot to remove the gear pin. and I only figured it out once I went to, uh, to retract the gear and the gears were... Um, stuck down and um, we had air traffic control and we had to deal with it by uh, letting them know and then ended up landing again so damn oh well lost footage is lost footage we move on anyway a bit of information we are carrying 228 people uh, zero fuel weight 221 tons so what's that 15 16 tons shy of maximum we can do as far as the flight plan goes, so routing for us today, we're out of the uh, northerly runway here, so 02 left, which is just over there. We're parked on Alpha 14, which is apparently where this flight departed from in real life, so I'm not cheating. Uh, 02 left, it's a northerly departure, um, and then turning kind of northwest, and it's just then a northwesterly route. So, according to the flight plan, it's out of here over the Bay of Bengal, over India, uh, through Pakistan, just north of Afghanistan into Uzbekistan. Uh, clipping the southwestern corner of uh, Kazakhstan and then a little bit of Russia and then entering Eastern Europe through uh, Belarus into Poland and then just uh, at the edge of the western side of Poland uh, descending down in towards uh, Germany finally towards Munich 
It's going to take about 12 and a half hours, initially cruising at 30,000 feet, flight level 300, stepping as high as flight level 360 today due to the weight restriction that we have with carrying almost every single person that this 777-300 can cram into it. So that's pretty much it. We're taking 113 tons of fuel, which is enough for just under 14 hours of flying. And our alternate today is Frankfurt. So there you go. That's pretty much everything in a nutshell. So let's get everything set up as normal. Um, for the people that hate nighttime, I'm sorry, it will change. But you can't really do much when this 12 hour flight, you're going to see some sort of night. So calm down. Okay, let's get the show on the road. It's very, very dark. We need to fix that. Uh, what can we do? We could put the dome light on, I guess, or we could be really fancy and turn on the individual floodlights, which I think would probably work better. Yeah, there you go, that looks nicer. There we go, put the one on the right side, and we'll also put the pedestal floodlight on too. Uh, there we go, nice. As far as the overhead panel, we can kind of see what we need over there, but there you go. Nice, okay, so first things first is uh, the ADIRU, and I'll, I'll do the emergency lights while I'm there. And then we can mess around with the FMC. Now I've uh, exported a company route uh, for us today, so we don't need to do much messing around as far as route entry. We just need to double check everything. Uh, but we are at Singapore, Whiskey Sierra, 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 Alpha 14. Of course, it goes in. Nice. And I'm waiting for the uh, IRS to let me update it, which shouldn't take too long. There you go. Take the GPS position like that, and then we'll go to route. I will request the uh, Singapore to Munich route, which is there, and that will come in for us. Let's wait for that to load. I just uh, saw before that uh, Airline to Sim, the people that did the uh, the Dash 8 stuff, are doing the 777 stuff now. They've, they've got a, I think he's a retired captain of a 777. He's, he's got hours on many aircraft, but I think his last one was a 777. So that'll be cool to see how incorrect I do everything. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for that actually, it's going to be pretty cool. Right, I'm going to load that in. There we go. Eventually. Route 1 uplink loading. Singapore 328. Runway 02 left. Like so. I can activate that. Okay, departing 02 left, and it is the Arosa 2 Echo, which is this one. And everything there. We'll copy the route just in case there is a problem and we need to uh, re-put stuff back in and as far as Perfinit goes we can just request that because PFPX does it all for us which is fantastic. Okay so the Perf init uplink is ready. We can check everything so as I said flight level 300 initially uh, cost index I think it gives you zero because sometimes they climb on cost index zero um, but I'll accept it anyway. Uh, I need to change some stuff though. I need to change that CG to 17.5. Uh, Cost index, I, I kind of want to change it to something higher, but we'll, we'll leave it at zero for the moment. Uh, I have some performance figures. Uh, we are using takeoff, no D rate, uh, and then natural assumed temperature of. Uh, come on, where is my thing? An assumed temperature of 40. There we go. 100.1% M1. That's uh, how heavy we are. Takeoff is flat 5, and CG is in. And look at those speeds. <laughs> Takeoff gross weight of 333.1, which will give us 176, 185, 189. We're pretty heavy. <laughs> we are pretty heavy. Okay, so we need to set 189. Like so, and the runway heading, which I don't actually know yet, nor do I know the initial climb, but we'll uh, just stick 020 in for a, uh, a rough estimate, and then we'll actually cross check that with the charts. Uh, flight director on the left and on the right, and we can do LNAV and VNAV. For now, as far as the ND goes, put the needles up, traffic on. Uh, data and the other side can have the same treatment apart from I want traffic data and terrain which is always 
useful, even though there is very little around here. Auto break RTO. Uh, we're on Vatsim, but there's no ATC, and I don't think there'll be any ATC into Munich, considering we get there at almost 6 a.m. Uh, so 1228, and we can squawk 2000 as well. And I want to put that on the doors page so I can close things up and get underway. Okay, so that's that done for now. I actually need to look at the charts now because if I don't, then uh, we'll have problems. And clicking out always kills the uh, the audio, which is funny. Uh, so, Arozo to Echo departure. Let's see. Uh, transition level or altitude even is 11,000 feet. So we'll stick that in. 11k. Uh, I almost put that in the wrong thing. As far as VNAV goes, uh, we can actually do the winds, so route data will request those winds. And the runway heading is 023, it's an RNAV departure, which is useful. 023, and do we have an initial climb? Probably, I still can't find that yet though. Load the winds in. Um, the initial climb normally is on the second page of the departure plate, there it is. Page one. Uh, to echo, initial climb is 3,000 feet. Great. It's a good job we don't have ATC because we'll be climbing very, very fast. Actually, no, we won't because we're heavy. So, yeah, forget I said that. Right, as far as step climbs go, we need to do those. Oh, did my speed brake lever just. Ah, that's my joystick. Because I use it to taxi in the Dash 8, and I was flying the Dash 8 last night, so I must have left it in the middle from when I, when I finished. Um, Step climbs. There are some. There are a few. And there is one at 320 at Indud. So I need to find that. Uh, what page? 23 pages of legs. Excellent. Indud. Indud. There it is. 320 at Indud. Uh, 320S. Like so. And that stays until. Sugir, that's a 340 climb at Sugir or Sugir, Sierra Uniform Golf India Romeo, there it is, 340S, and then the final climb is the 360 at a place called Tomti, Tomti, there he is, 360S, so that is all of the step climbs and that's as high as we go. And Tom T apparently is inside of, uh, well, it's just east of Poland, so it's, uh, it's actually quite a late step climb, fair enough. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything done. We've got all the wins in, we've got all the performance data, that can go on the takeoff reference page. We'll stick the other FMC on the legs page. Uh, progress, you see, 5,731 miles, landing at 0344 Zulu which is about the scheduled time um, and 13 or just under 14 tons of fuel but we've not put the arrival in yet and our reserve today is 9.8 so looks pretty spot on from where I'm looking legs page for that sorted okay I think with that in mind we can go through some of the uh, inbuilt checklists so Pre-flight oxygen will pretend the flight instruments are all good. You can see everything matches up. There is an actual procedure, like you actually say if there was a, a multi-crew like environment, you would cross-check different things, but I don't have anyone, it's just me, so yeah. Parking brake is set. Uh, please set parking brakes immediately. I did. What are you talking about? Okay. Before start checklist, well, I suppose we could go through that very, very quickly. Uh, first things first, though, let us start the APU. And let us get that underway. We can turn the seatbelt signs on. We're done fueling. Uh, the no smoking sign, obviously, should be on, on or auto. Either way, it needs to illuminate. I don't think it does anything nowadays. I'm going to put a logo light on because it's dark outside. And I'm going to tell GSX to sod off. So, pushback and departure. We don't want to start engines before the, uh, before the pushback. And we can start to close the doors. So, we'll close the cargo doors. Uh, sorry, not the cargo doors. The uh, catering doors. Now we'll close the cargo doors. And we'll close the front left, uh, forward, and the aft ones as well. And we can arm those too. Arm, arm, and arm. 
Good. I don't know what, is GSX actually going to do something? I feel like I need to... Waiting for other services to complete. Okay, no problem. Well, before we do that then, I guess we should run through the uh, before start checklist. So flight that goes not modeled, MCP is set, takeoff speeds are set, CDU pre-flight is completed, trim at the moment is, uh, it wants a six units, but I can't do the trim yet. Uh, so it's zero at the moment. Taxi and takeoff briefing is all good. And the beacon light will just wait for the APU so I can disconnect all the ground stuff, which is already on now. So we will get rid of the external power. And then we will go to the ground connections and we will remove pretty much everything. Like so. And then with that, we can put the beacon light on. Beacon light is on. That brings us to the after start checklist or before taxi checklist. So we'll go to the door page, just make sure everything's good there. Which it is. And then the engine page so we can actually start up. Very good. Uh, I'll put the fuel pumps on now. It's a fuel in the center. Yes, there is. Center pumps need to go on. Like so. Packs can go to auto. And we can start to pressurize, I would imagine. Departure check completed. Cool. Parking brake released, and we're off at 15.09. Very good. 15.09. Okay, fault lights out on that one. And the hydraulics are all starting to pressurize. They've probably cancelled that uh, those memos in the uh, in the ECAS. Right, let's start engine at number two straight away. Okay, two stabilized and GSX is done with the pushback, so we'll start one. Yeah, that's both engines up and running. Good stuff. No issues with the start. Apparently FSUI PC wanted to freeze my view when I was pushing back on the first uh, engine, so if it stuttered, I'm sorry, but yeah, great. So, engines are started. Just wait for the left-hand side to uh, 
get rid of the warning lights, which it just has. Nice. So we can ditch the APU. We don't need that anymore. We'll uh, go to the flight control page, uh, which is here. We'll set the trim to six. Like so. Flaps need to go to five. Like so. And with that, we can do a control check. So, full left, full right. back all the way forwards and then rudder all the way left and all the way right okay we're done with the flight control page we can run through the checklist so anti-ice is not required recall is just the TCAS which we can now switch on and so recall is checked Flight controls are checked and ground equipment is clear, which means that we have done everything we need to do. Next is before takeoff. So turn offs, taxi light, and brakes released. And we'll swing it round to the right. Although I can't see any taxi lights, which is interesting. Just the shortest taxi ever over to runway zero two left. Quite a bit of power. I actually forgot to add the friction add-on to uh, to the new install of uh, Windows or B3D. So my bad. That's why it's taken a bit of power to move. But still, we're extremely heavy. So weather radar can come on. There's runway zero two left. I feel like I'm on taxiing on the sea. It's very, uh, it's very wonky. <laughs> you see that with Easy Dark? It's it's like all over the place. It's very weird. Okay, can we go full length? Is there a full length available? Doesn't matter anyway. We'll just turn here. Okay. Zero two left. Here we are. So, stick all the ta uh, landing lights on. I think this is the bug, isn't it, with P3D in the night? It doesn't have any. It doesn't have any landing lights. I hope they fix that in 3.2. Okay. Strobe lights. Taxi light can come off. And away we go. Hopefully. Ah, I've never seen. I've actually never witnessed that bug before with the lights. Maybe it's because I made the jump to 3.1. Is there a fix for that? I actually think someone remember. I remember um, someone mentioning that you could, uh, if you load in the day first and then switch to night, it's okay. I don't know. Thankfully, we have runway lights, so that's all good. Zero two left. Easy Dock is doing its thing where it moves itself around. Okay, I am ready to go. Clocks are automatic on this thing, so let's just put the power in and away we go. 55% N1 or thereabouts. 
stable. Well, I just turned the flight director off. Really? <laughs> Fail number one. Let me just stop and do that again. Flight director left, flight director right. I have never done that in my life. I meant to hit Toga on this screw and hit the flight director. Let's try that again. Imagine that announcement to the passengers. Sorry, but I pressed the wrong button. Right, this time please, Toga, thank you. Power is coming in. 99.8% apparently, although the FMC said 100 and 100 .1. So there's power set. It's awfully bumpy, there's 80 knots. Singapore, you need a new runway surface. Airborne, positive rate, gear up, trimmed absolutely perfectly, I love the calculation of the trim on the 777, it always gets it right. Climb powers in. Pitch forward a little bit and accelerate. I'm sure the residents of Singapore will absolutely love us. Tanking a triple seven over the top of them at 250 knots, but hey ho. Right, I'm gonna reset the autopilot to flight level 300. Push it in a bit so we actually have some vertical profile. Flying from a 20 degree offset to the yoke is interesting. Okay, flat one. Look at the flat margins, that's insane. Five thousand. There isn't really much to see in the way of views. And there we have it. Don't really need to hand fly that anymore. Just stick the autopilot on and let it do the rest. I don't know why I always click that side. The autopilot is here. I, I always reach over there. I think it's because of the seven three seven. We'll square up the, uh, the heading. Climbing to a flight level now, so we can set a standard once, twice, and three times. After takeoff checklist, while the landing is up, flaps are up, and that is us in the climb to flight level 300. Oh, look at that dirty weather out there! Thankfully, we're not going anywhere near it.
Okay, so as you can see, bottom left of the PFD here, we are 11 hours and 51 minutes into the flight. Uh, it's currently 3.27 UTC, so approaching half past four in the morning in Germany. And we have, let's see, 351 miles to go. However, can you see this? This is uh, what brought, essentially, the British Airways aircraft down short of 27 left at Heathrow, speed of 38. And uh, it happens when uh, the fuel temperature gets too low, the fuel can essentially freeze. And uh, one thing that leads to another, and it starts the engine of oxygen, the engine fails, and then you end up landing short of the runway. Or it would cut here if we didn't deal with it. Uh, there are a few things that we can do. I know how to deal with this already, but just for the people that don't know how to handle errors or uh, situations in the 777, uh, the checklist is your friend, and more specifically is the non-normal menu. If you click that, it gives you a bunch of things which could possibly go wrong directly relating to this screen here, and some not directly relating to this screen, but mostly this screen. Um, so for us it's a fuel, so we click on fuel and then you see you have a bunch of fuel issues here and we see fuel temp low on the top, so fuel temp low. Um, so then you, it goes through to this kind of memo situation and it says fuel temperature is near the minimum. Now the fuel temperature freeze I think on the 777 is minus 37 I think, minus 37 degrees C. Um, at the moment we're at minus 35 and if we click on the fuel page here it should tell us, yeah, there you go, min fuel temp is minus 37, and the fuel temp at the moment is minus 35. So we have two degrees of uh, essentially leeway. However, having said that, uh, the uh, 777 does not like you to be more than three away from the minimum. So, uh, or more than, less than three, should I say, not more than three. So back to the checklist, you can see here, the first thing it tells us to do is increase airspeed, and then either change altitude or deviate to a warmer air mass to achieve a total air temperature equal to higher, sorry, equal to or higher than the fuel temperature limit, so 3 degrees C above the fuel freeze point, which is what I just said. So basically, if we can get this temperature to minus 34 or better, then we will get rid of this warning and we'll be able to carry on. Uh, it's not going to stop us just yet because we've still got, we've still got 2 degrees to go, but it's basically telling us to watch out, which is... Uh, is not good and you can see here the, t the TAT so total air temperature is minus 36 degrees um, so essentially minus 33 would be more preferable than minus 34 but we'll figure this out so uh, first things first is uh, we're at 360 we've got 330 miles to go we are going to be descending soon but I don't want to chance it because I have service based failures turned on so first thing we're going to do is descend to flight level 320 so we'll do that in VS, and we'll do it at 1,000 feet a minute, and we'll also change this over to Mach, and we'll fly a little bit faster as well. So we'll do Mach decimal 85. We'll make sure that on the VNAV page, this doesn't think we're descending. Yeah, see what it's done, it's triggered the descent page. So we'll just put 320 for Econ Cruise, and then that will then not cry about descending, and it should recalculate everything. There you go, 320, 320, 320, perfect. And I've got some traffic on TCAS, minus 26 out to the left of us. I wonder if we can see that. Probably not. Uh, nah, not a chance. Oh well, never mind. So, as we descend down, and as we uh, gradually increase speed, that should essentially increase the temperature, which is what you want. Wait, that traffic's in front of us. I thought it was behind us. I'm so confused. Minus 22 off to the left. Um, anyone with better eyes than me see anything? Because I certainly can't. No, I don't see anything out there. It's very dark anyway. Um, so, yeah, essentially that is how you combat this error. And once we've got off the, uh, once we got out of the danger zone, then we can check these off and um, we'll carry on as we are. As long as you catch it in time and fix it, there is really no problem. Oh, look, there's someone else in front of us. Minus a thousand, uh, minus hundred. Actually, they're dead level with us about to be. Oh no, they're not. They're climbing. They're climbing through us. Yeah, I can't see that. So, I'll update you when I have let this run its course and descend down to three two zero and mag decimal eight five, and then uh, we'll be ready to start our descent planning into uh, Munich. Looking to land at four twenty four Zulu. And I don't know why I just stuttered them. Landing at 424 Zulu 
Uh, we've, we've, we've not got the arrival in yet, but scheduled to land with 11, uh, just over 11 tons of fuel. So I'll get back to you once we're a little bit further down the way, and hopefully this fuel problem has uh, sorted itself out. Okay, so as you can see, the fuel low temperature light just went out, which means we have successfully avoided any potential danger. It took a while to figure out actually because I descended down to 320 and kept the high speed, it didn't work. So I descended further to, uh, to flight level 300, which is where we're at now, and the, uh, the fuel temperature has, uh, it's minus 34, so it's three degrees from minimum fuel temp. So as long as it stays there, I'm happy. And again, we've only got 240 odd miles left to run, so by the time we, uh, well, by the time it gets a chance to freeze over again, we'll already be well in the descent to Munich. Speaking of which, I guess we should program that now. So, uh, I was just looking at the weather. It's pretty nice. Uh, it's just typical morning weather. It's a uh, light cloud. The wind is from the west at just uh, 8 knots, so it's not too bad. And uh, so we plan to land on runway 26 right. ILS approach. And it's the, let's see, uh, we're coming in through a place called Arbax, apparently. So I assume Arbax to Alpha. We'll have to do a bit of, uh, a bit of changing up here though, because from the flight plan comes in from an odd angle. So, uh, let's see, where can we go in from? I don't actually know. We'll execute that for the moment, and then I'll see what's what. So, uh, coming from a place called Bingu. Ah, oh, there's Bingu. Okay, I can see Bingu. So it should go Bingu, and then t uh, Tusto, then Landu, and then from Landu, it's radar vectors uh, for the ILS, which I assume then starts at Gudeg. Or good egg. Could be good egg, like good egg. Uh, let me check the ILS chart. ILS 26 right. Starts at... Yeah, good egg. Nice. There is a transition if you want it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go direct from Landu, actually. So that will just give us a nice uh, right base turn for runway uh, 26 left. Again, it's... 4 5 a.m. In, uh, in Germany almost so it's uh, it's gonna be pretty quiet unless the morning rush hour is uh, is in tow and if so then oh well we'll try you just check the plan page yeah you can see so we're coming from the north uh, east and then we make a right turn overhead bingu then left turn at Landu direct to the ILS and then straight onto the ILS Relatively straightforward. That's what I like to see. In its reference page, uh, well, we're going to be landing with flap 30. I just need to adjust that gross weight a little bit. It's 233. Like that. And flap 30, 144. Perfect. VNAV, well, the transition altitude into here is 5,000 feet. So we'll put 050 in and we'll request the winds. I can get rid of that fuel page now. Uh, where are we gone? Fuel, fuel, fuel. There we go. Done. Let's wait for these winds to uplink. Temperature is 12 as well down on the ground in the Munich, so we don't need any anti-ice or anything like that. So we can load those in. Invalid forecast uplink. Excellent. What the does that? Maybe there's like a timestamp on the winds, and if you try and import them in after that timestamp, it doesn't like it. I'm going to try and purge and see what happens when you purge. Maybe that would do something. If not, then whatever. We'll just leave them out. Right, let's see. Purge. Nope. <laughs> nah, that didn't work. I think there's, there must be a timestamp on the winds, but it doesn't matter anyway. The whole point is uh, to get better performance accuracy, but it's going to be a relatively straightened approach anyway. So let's see, what restrictions do we have? 
Uh, good egg 5000, that's it. You can see it here. Uh, flight level 50. I don't know why it says flight level 50 considering the transition altitude is 5000. But what ebbs? Okay, that's everything programmed in. I was going to put range rings in and stuff like that, but the frame rate is already bad enough and I don't want to jeopardize it even more. So, uh, top of descent for us is a 99 miles. And uh, of course, I will talk to you when we are well established into the, the uh, descent into Munich.
Okay, so we're just in the right turn of our uh, Bingu, heading towards uh, a place called Tusto, through flight level 120. Everything is going as planned. I'm just looking at the ground charts for, uh, for where this flight parks. It parks on Terminal 2, which is uh, not too far from uh, when we vacate. We're going to uh, park on stand 208. So once we're down on the ground, I'll uh, get GSX to sort that out. Uh, but now we just have to meet the 5,000 restriction at uh, Good Egg. And then once we've done that, we're pretty much set on the ILS. Did, um, speaking of ILSs, which is really nothing to do with ILSs, uh, last night I was flying in the Q400 with uh, a friend and we did uh, a VOR DME approach into Manchester. And um, there's something quite satisfying about completing a VOR DME approach and it actually working out perfectly. Perfectly? But I said that weird, I said it like a conjoined word. Perfectly. Um, yeah, so I might do some non precision stuff in the not too distant future because I really enjoyed that. I mean, okay, it's great, you know, getting a continuous descent and flying an ILS and this, that, and the other, but if, uh, if you're doing a non precision and it works out and you've got your, your stuff together. And, you know, you get the descent profile and the speed all right and, and everything else. It's, it's definitely more uh, self-satisfying than flying an ILS, absolutely. However, I digress. Water brake 2 is what we are using. We use idle reverse. Some traffic off to our right-hand side somewhere. Which I will see if I can see. And that micro freeze that you just saw there is a direct result of FSCI PC. When it auto saves for some reason now, it's uh, ever since I reinstalled Windows, it's freezing. And it normally is a Windows Defender problem, like the file exclusions aren't right. But I turn Windows Defender completely off and it's still doing it, so I don't know why. How frustrating. Okay, FSUI PC is disabled. Goodbye, good riddance. Right, through uh, flight level 100, so the uh, turn off lights and the logo light can come on. And we will stick on the left and the right landing light. And we will start the turn towards Good Egg. Pressure is 1003. We're descending to an altitude so we can set that. Look at the view. I know it's dark, but still. This thing has an hour turnaround, by the way. Um, well, less than that, really. We're a bit late. It's scheduled to land at uh, at 4.10, and it's now 4.20. It's meant to depart at 5.10 to Manchester, so... A little bit late. A little bit late. We've been in the air for 12 hours and 44 minutes, so... A little bit longer than expected. However, it is what it is. It's asking me for some, uh, for some drag, but... I give it a little bit. I don't think we need it to be honest. Anyway, checklist we should have done a long time ago. Uh, recall uh, is checked, nothing. Notes sorted, auto brake set. Landing data, as I said, we're landing uh, flap 30 and approach briefing complete. We want the approach checklist when it unfreezes. Okay, that wasn't FSU IPC, maybe it's loading the airport in. Altimeters are set 1003. And then the next one to come is a landing checklist. Perfect. Something is not right. I am getting 19 frames and I'm not even at the airport. Why is this happening? Very weird. Anyway, range from the, uh, from the field is just under 20 miles. So speed is good. Altitude is also good. Frame rate less so. Oh well, right, you can see Munich over there. That's Munich. Takes the immersion out when it lags. I feel sorry for people that have um, that have less than desirable computers that, and it lags just by the fact that it's a bad computer. So it's actually even more frustrating when you don't have a reason for the lag though. This thing should be able to easily handle all of this, but obviously not today. And especially because it's night, isn't it? Exactly crazy daytime graphics. There aren't any lights either, so something is a bit odd. There are a few lights, I guess. Yeah, no, there is. There are lights. There are lights. I guess we're just pointing in the direction where there aren't many IRL. 
Okay, so I'm going to take flat one. Oh, wait, I thought it was traffic then. There's a, <laughs> some happy lights for our leading approach lights for another airfield. What airfield is that? Let's have a look. Oh, the showers? No, it must be one of those small ones. Right, I'm going to speed into VNet, start sliding us down. Give it a bit of speed break. A bit more speed break than we've already got. Frame rate's okay now. Interesting. But it's still micro freezes. Okay, it's turning onto the ILS. I'll arm the localizer. I keep that descent going down at this exact VS. Perfect. There's a localizer, and that should. Oh, that should really put us on the glide. Yes, it did. Okay, flat five. Missed approach altitude is 5,000 feet, so I'm going to put that back up. Runway heading 261. We'll bring the speed further down to flat five bug speed. Visual with the 26 right pappies, kind of, leading lights too. I'll stick all the lights on because. It's not as if we've got ATC that's going to clear us to land. 11 miles to go. We will take flap 15. And we'll fly 170 knots for a moment. Call minimum today 1690. But that's not going to be any sort of issue because look how clear it is. It's really, really clear. Approach speed of 144. Cabin's ready. So we're going to come 154. 13 knot headwind. Which actually equates to about a 10 knot with the deviations 20 degrees offset to the right. So about 10 knots. Uh, we'll take gear down. Take flat 20. And we'll just keep bringing all these flaps out now. So 154, flat 30. It's very, very marginal with that flap setting. Oh well. Make sure the speed brake stowed, which it is. And also armed, which it is. And then we can run through the landing checklist. So, speed brakes armed, landing gear is down, and the flaps are 30 green. Brilliant. Okay, well, I guess I should fly the thing instead of letting the other pilot do it. There's no point in the other pilot landing it on the night flight tonight. So, my aircraft. Nice direct headwind now, that's what I like to see. Is that traffic taxiing to 26 right? It better not be. One thousand. If that guy lines up, I am going to be furious. No, it looks okay. Losing the glide a little bit though, let's fix that. Stay where you are. Don't be that guy. Come on, do please stop. I think he's stopping. Nice. Where is he? Oh no, he's moving onto the runway. Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Initiating a go around. How frustrating. Flat 
Oops, 15. Stick the other panel back in. It's uh, flaps 15. If it will actually do that. There we go. So, come on, pitch forward. Pitch forward. There you go. Okay, gear up. Wasn't liking that, was it? <laughs> Took a while for that to respond. Passing after a 12 hour, 51 minute flight I need. Is that happening or whatever? Okay, flat five. I didn't even get a chance to see what it was. It looked like a Lufthansa. Okay, leveling at five and flap one. Actually, we'll just do flap up speed. 230 knots and flap up altitude alert yeah why aren't you holding 5k I'd love to know that as well right let's spin it around and try again 040 reciprocal 080 but I want to go a little bit further out ah, right let's reprogram that approach so ILS 26 right, that's all we needed at the moment. Uh, I'll just grab the center fix 261. And then I've got an extended center line to work from. What I'll do. And A, voila. Speed shouldn't be too dissimilar. One knot we lost. Okay, so we're going at 154 instead of one. Sorry, 153 instead of 154. God damn it. You can see them on the T-cast just climbing away like, ha 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 ha, so funny. Where are you? There you are, look at that. Who are you? I'm gonna find you. Lufthansa, Airbus. You scumbag. I hope you're happy with yourself. I really do. Just just turn your t cas on before you depart and just lock on the approach path. That's all you need to do. It's not really that difficult. Because now I have to go around. Okay, I've got I've got enough fuel to go around, but it's just an extra 10 minutes that I really didn't need to spend flying. Anyway, whatever. It is what it is. Okay, second time lucky, I guess. Let's uh, turn towards the ILS. And we'll descend to 4,000 feet. I'll start slowing down again, so flap one. I shall just go flap five straight away. I need to mess around with incrementing it. It's flap five speed. 15 miles out, so we've got plenty of room. And there's something on TCAS just to the left of us, but I can't see it. I need to redo that uh, checklist again. So normal menu, landing eventually. If I do that and go that way, go. Okay, I see. Checklist override. No, that was probably not a great idea. Oh yeah, you can do checklist override like this. And then just push it in and out. And then that'll be approach, checklist override. And then landing. Nice. Good. Sweet. Okay. 
time to turn in. 240, be a nice enough cut. On the localizer, and I'll also take flat 15. And we'll do 170 knots until we're on the glide. 2500 2, feet. Looking good. Fingers crossed no one gets in the way this time. There's the localizer. On the approach. Okay, 1,000 feet. Let's run through the landing checklist really quick. It's all green. We'll take out the autopilot. Double press. My aircraft once again. Second time lucky. Nothing in the way this time. Looks good. There's one guy taxiing, but see, there's one guy who's got airborne too, but no one in the way as far as I can see. Wind is still. Headwind, which is nice. Five hundred. Continue. This is a green. Water brake doing its thing. It's 80. 70. Manual braking. 60. Stow the reverses. And I'll get off this rapid exit to the left. After 13 hours and 3 minutes, <laughs> welcome to Munich. We want stand 208, remember, so we'll get GSX to, uh, to do that for us. 208. Actually, no, 207, because 208 wasn't available with GSX, sadly. Um, okay. 208, 208, 208. Now I have to figure out where to go. Shall I get a follow me? Yeah, let's get a follow me. Yes, let's follow me. 
Might as bring them, let them bring us in in style. Okay, speed break in, flaps in. You can turn off the flight directors. Water break off. Taxi lights on, landing lights off, strobe lights off. APU to start. And now I just have to wait for this stupid car. I don't know which way it's going to come from. But I'm hoping it's not far away. Um, oh look, guy just took off the other runway. What is that? It is a Transavia by the looks of it. Is it Transavia or is it Germania? Germania maybe. It's in the left turn, I don't that much. Oh come on, where's this follow me car? I don't think the follow me's have woken up yet. Oh wait, I think I see it down there. There it is, it's on its way. It's taking us to Terminal 2, which I don't actually know where it is. Oh, that was never been. And some cargo plane. What is that? Can't see, it's too dark. What was that noise? I just heard something. Sounds like someone's about to toga into me. Can you hear that? I can't, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's weird. Okay, here's a follow me anyway. Let's see if we can actually use this follow me without it ditching us. Follow me has arrived. Okay, which way are we going? So, we're going left. Wait, that noise we heard? Oh, it was an aircraft taking off. Look at it go. We're going this way, apparently. How far this way? Where have you gone, follow me? Oh, there you are. Yeah, that noise we heard was an aircraft spooling up. I've never heard that before on any flight sim, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Oh, look, there's a guy landing. Nice. Let's see, what is that? It's a lofty bus that's just smashed itself down onto the ground. I am not liking these frames though. I don't know what's going on. They're never usually this bad. Okay, so we're going to the left. I think I can hear another one spooling up. I can see something on TCAS. Speaking of TCAS, let's turn ours off. We don't really need it anymore. And I can definitely hear something now. Okay, so we're turning right here. Ah, yeah, you can see someone over there just taking off. Very cool. Ah, yeah, look, I think this is a stand here on the right. I can see the GSX vehicles. I wish it was a bit more lit. The, the terminal is not lit very well. It's very dark. I don't like that. You should be able to see more than that. Yep, here's our stand waiting for us. Very good. Okay, taxi lights off, turn off lights off. And 208. Oh, it was 207, wasn't it? 207. Ah, oh, with the GSX Marshall that stood on a ladder. I remember this. Nice turn onto the sand. Oh. 
I, w I wonder how you get rid of those things above his head. That's actually really annoying. I suppose it's good to cheat with him, but that's all they're good for. Five, four, three, two, one. And stop. Parking brake set. APU's online. You can cut the engines. And the beacon light can go off. And the dome light can come on. Preferably all the way. You parked a bit too left in the skew. I don't care. <laughs> How about that? Oh, here comes the door, or the jetway. And we will turn off the hydraulics. Fuel pumps can go off. Packs can come off. And we can stow the aircraft. So we will go to... Ground connections and the wheel chocks, that's all we need for now. Doors, disarm, open, disarm, open, 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 and open. And there we are. After, let's have a look at the clock down here. It's 4.48 UTC, 13 hours and 3 minutes that took. That was an insane flight. Crazy stuff. So, here we are in all of our glory on stand 207. Look at how much... Tra I must, have I, have, how have I made this traffic work? I don't understand. I've never seen this before. Look at that Embraer over there. It's chilling out. And then there's a CRJ on the runway. There's lots of Lufthansa's. What's that? An Air China Airbus. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But have you noticed how... None of the jet... Oh, wait, what? The jetways are connected to the aircraft, too? How do you even do that? Is that sewed? Is that like what the whole sewed thing's about? Even the smaller gates have them. That is definitely a CRJ powering up. That is loud. Crazy. Right, well, that ends part number one. I almost said two, then, of our journey to Manchester. I'm going to turn this around now, get underway, fly to Manchester... We're going to be a little bit late. The departure time should have been 5.10, but considering we only landed at 4.48, that's probably not going to happen, but, well, what's we'll half an hour between friends, eh? Okay, cool. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you continue to watch part two. But if not, let me know what you thought. Likes and dislikes are always welcome, as long as they're constructive. And uh, until the next video, I shall see you all soon. Take care, and bye-bye.